your assessment, there's information about that on your website about um, submission of completed work, helpful tips, uh, authenticity of your work and plagiarism. Extension, should you require one, please apply for them four days prior to the due date. Your class attendance, you're required to attend 80% of each unit. Employability skills is part of what we will be assessing you on as well. We identify those employability skills through observations, through your discussions, um, through your um, communications <coughs> with us via email, all those sort of things. So please do those as much as possible in a professional and respectful manner. So we're going to be assessing you using one task and ongoing reflections in your blog. Okay, this is something that will go across the whole course. I will be assessing your first assessment task and I will return those to you after you submitted them marked. The reflections will be checked by each individual trainer at each unit where we've prompted you to do that reflection about that unit. You will also be assessed on workplace assessment. So that includes those workplace activities um, that you're going to be listing on your website. Um, again, the grade is satisfactory or not yet satisfactory. And should you require assistance, please let us know. You can contact your tutor, student support, or the coordinator. Um, we are more than happy for you to just approach us and just say, look, I'm having some real issues with this, or uh, um, what do you mean by that question? Because if you're struggling with it, others might be, and we might need to adjust how we worded the question. So this is where we say feedback for us is very important. So I'll open up the uh, assessment itself and it will make much more sense to you once you've done the learning. You want to keep an ongoing reflective journal in your private website over the duration of the course. Um, the following applies. Reflection should be regular, a minimum of once per fortnight, preferably weekly. So it, just get into that practice and you'll be okay. Your reflections are an opportunity to explore your own thought processes with a view to ongoing um, self-development and continual improvement. Your entries must include reflections on the guided questions below, but should also include a range of issues that arise in your day-to-day -day work activities. So um, we've given you a bit of a guide, but if there are other things you feel um, will be an advantage to reflect on, please feel free to do so. So general inclusions should also include things that concern you about your work and study, things that went well at work, why, what did not go well, why and what would you do differently next time, what have you learned about yourself, a client, colleagues, etc. this week, things that arise from time to time in class, work or teams. Further guided questions are detailed in the document provided. Um, please ensure you label your blog entries with the unit code and include the question you are addressing. Um, you're reflecting on a certain, uh, on another unit. Just use the little code at the start or even the name of the, the unit will be fine so that we can map back to what you're reflecting about. Set yourself long-term goals addressing the following questions for this assessment. For each goal, set yourself at least four short-term objectives. So some of the things will, will take time, so get some short-term things happening towards that um, bigger goal. Does that make sense? So where do you want to be in five years' time? What process would you need to put in place for that to happen? So what steps will I need to take to get there? How can I improve or strengthen my work performance? So look at what you're doing now. How can I strengthen that? What are the key areas I want to or need to develop to remain proficient in my profession? So it's really looking about your professional plan. What improvements could we make? Who would I consult with to understand the key areas in which I need development? So it might be doing that appraisal, getting that good information back and using it. What are new skills and knowledge I will need in the future? So you have to be a bit of we are. 
of what skills you have as to what skills you need to develop. Where can I go or what can I do to help me get these skills? So what sort of, it might be doing a course, it might be sitting down with a mentor, it might be something similar to that. What are the emerging industry developments I need to be aware of to ensure improvement of my own practice? So it's being aware of what sector you are in, what sort of things you need to be aware of to keep things on the go. There are often changes in our training. How do we keep up to date with that? What sort of um, ongoing support or training do we need to continue that? So how do we go about it and what, what's my role in it and what sort of things do I need to know to be able to assist in the development of that? Uh, what ethical and legal requirements should I be aware of in the development of my goals? So that policy really sits within that framework of making sure that we have all of that information. It's a requirement of our organisation to make our staff aware of where we sit in relation to child protection. When and how will I engage in the review processes in relation to upgrading my skills and knowledge? So we've made a plan. When are we going to do it and how? After determining the key learning areas in which you want to focus, develop specific and measurable goals in which to pursue. So you need to be able to measure it. So very similar to, I need to maybe learn how to use my computer better. So your measurement may be, I can now independently develop a complex Word document or formulate a report. It has to have a measure to it. I've got attached templates I will show you, or you can create your own. This is just a basic one. If you feel that there's something else you want to add, please feel free. This is about you. It's not about how I've set it up as a suggestion. It's about how you would make it right for your particular situation. Facilitate your goal setting process to document your results and to track your accomplishments for the next five years. So make sure you include four long-term goals. So we want four goals over five years span. At least four short-term objectives for each of those goals. So what little steps do I need to take? Uh, include projected timelines. So how, when will this happen? How are you going to achieve this? Use a separate page for each goal. Include personal and professional goals where appropriate. So. Um, some of it might be, I want to do a course, but I have to fund it. How am I going to manage that funding? Um, what other things could you think of about where your personal life would impact that? I need to go and uh, do a course, but we have a holiday booked. How am I going to manage those sort of things? I need to achieve this step or strategy. How will I evaluate the step or strategy has been accomplished? So first, what is it? What's our time frame? And what resources? So resources could be a person. Resources could be a course. Resources could be, you know, a book you need to, to get to refer to. It might be involving yourself in a, a supportive group or community. So just who is going to be part of that journey with you to enable you to achieve that goal? And how will you evaluate the step or strategy has been accomplished? How will you know you've done it? Look, really, it's about you making the plan that works for yeah. you.